for shooting day, he still leads him with 11. I thought Tilson did a good job coming off the bench. Look at Lester Goodwin getting all that help, though. Very balanced for the Miners. Goodwin really took over about the 15-minute uh, mark of the second, of the first half, I should say. And the UTEP guards carrying a big load of the scoring in the first half, and Feitel will start the second half. He played only five and a half minutes of got the a first two half. Foul. Got an intentional foul. And that's going to be on Feitel. Feitel. He popped an elbow. Joe yeah. Belmont catches it. Vital has his fourth foul. Well, for all intents and purposes, Irv Vital has been taken out of this ball game now. Just about. He only Steel. played about four. Good one outside. He's got it. He's got 12 now. All from long range, except for that one layup. Did a good job. Sinek tried to help out, jump on uh, after sideline and missed the steal. But nice move. Lob it in to Sarah and works on final. Shot it up over him and in. He's got 13. Don't those scores have a way of finding a, a, a way to get it in the hoop? They, they really can't do. shoot it at all today, and yet he's going to wind up with 20. And the Miners have asked for time. Irv with 17 minutes and 22 seconds remaining. A look at Liddell Anderson. There is timeout here at the Special Event Center. And the UTEP Miners lead at 41 oh, to 31. There. Sinek free in the corner. And he hits it. We got ourselves a hard strike. This six-point game. And Sinek has six points in this game. 41-35. So BYU has outscored UTEP 10-2 here in the early going. And BYU has to be because they trail by 14, but they have outscored the Miners 10-2. Andy Toulson is in, number 25. That's Donnell Allen, six points today. Gary, you know, talking about down here, everybody knows that uh, Haskins has been tough in this building at 174%. I remember the old gym and the old Coliseum. He won 93% of his games. He was 216 and 16. If you walked out of there with a win, you really accomplished something. It's one of the great home court advantages in the country. I wonder if he'd like to be back in there. Oh, you know he would, because in here they're too comfortable. Yeah. People sit in those easy seats and don't get after the stripes in the other team. That other place, those splinters in your seat kept you moving. Tolson in the lane, and he's got it. Andy Tolson has come off the bench today to do a good job. He's got eight now. By the backboard. That's 16 fouls on the Cougars. Only one on the Miners. So here comes UTEP. Knighting got that last foul, by the way. That was his first. Lockhart, head of the key. And the man for BYU. Lockhart shoots it. Thanks it in. Good job by Ken Lockhart. He's got six. The guy's got a little bulldog in his eye. Get a chance to talk to him. Miners back in the zone now, trying to cut off the inside attack to Sarlina. He'll come out to get it. You know, Lockhart's quite a story. He's an art major, grows roses outside of his dorm room. He collects baseball. Nothing wrong with collecting baseball cards. Sarlina misses. Tolson with a left jam. hand mid jam. Boy, this guy is. Now they're really getting some ball movement. Sarlina from 15 feet, yes. There's that spread eagle jumper. We have ourselves a two-point ball game. 46-44. An all man-to-man -man defense for eight minutes for BYU. It got them back in the game. 12-11 left to play in the ball game. It is a two-point game. Lob it inside the Feidel. Feidel heavy drive. Hustled it up and in, and he was fouled. one left to play as we take a look at the crowd and the scoreboard. A sellout crowd here in the Special Event Center today. 12,222. Very like their basketball down here. 63-52. Good one gets one or two. Look at those uh, shooting percentages. It's so similar to what happened up in Provo. It's the reversal. Exactly. We looked at that Fresno score. They call uh, the gym up there Grant's Tomb. That guy can play some defense. And he had his uh, had his upbringing in the whack. He played for Jim Williams at CSU. Good one. Tipped that ball into the hands of Feidel. And now UTEP brings it back into the front court with the pony. Jeep Jackson handling the ball now as he came into the lineup during that timeout. Feidel, 14 feet. Got the roll. Got five points in the last four possessions. And well, you can see him. Now he gets a cross court pass and now will shoot it. Got the easy roll. There's Soft his touch. 20. Boy, does he get a shooter's bounce. I like him better on the right side. Coming in spread eagle. We got ourselves a four point ball game. 52 48. Sarlina with 20, as you said, or Juden Smith. And he 
gets it. That wasn't bad either, was it? Sure wasn't. He's got 11. Lead back to six for UTEP. Now the fans on their feet, chanting defense in the special event center. Tulsa, no, and then Sarah Linen tips it again and gets it. I'm not sure if they give to him. They're making a decision. It's a three to five vote on press row. Who'd they give it to? Well, it's a two-point ball game. We'll see if they give it to Tulsa or Sarah Linen. Tulsa had the first one and missed, and then the next one went up and in. And we'll see who they give it to. Shovel it up. No, Knighting with the loose basketball, the air ball. And BYU comes up with an opportunity to tie the ball game. Richie Webb against Kent Lockhart. Sarah Linehead muscles it up. Tough shot. Oh, what a strong rebound by That's Knighting. Good. It's good, and he was fouled. Good one, Fires. No good. Tom Knighting. Boy, he has really taken control on both ends here. And once again, he hadn't done that much this year, but Knighting looks like a man possessed right now. Cougars are trying to up that lead. Look at this. Sarlina scores, and a foul. That's Basket good. Count. He charges. Yep. Sarlina complaining they were hanging on his arms. His basket will count. I'll second that. We really appreciate the work they do for us every week. Sarah Lyon, look at that. Good defense by Smith. He did a great job. All right, let's see if this guy can get his ball club squared away because they have had no rhythm. The crowd getting involved. You just need to get some movement. Five and a half minutes left to play in this basketball game. BYU leading by two. Juden Smith. baseline, knocks it down. He's got a free throw coming. He's been sensational on defense. Now he helps him out on offense. There's the move. Cougars want the charge. Gets the field because there was no position. Got him with a knee. Sarlino gets the foul, his third. Juden Smith now with 13 points. And he'll have an opportunity to put the Miners back in front as this game is tied at 57 with 5.20 to play. Puts his club back on top. Cougars trying to regain the lead. Sarolina, jumper, good, 10-footer. Can he hang in the air a little bit? Oh! Juden Smith couldn't play any better defense than that. 26 points for Sarolina. BYU wide open again, doesn't it? Outside. Oh, Sarolina, soft touch. Yeah, this one's going to wind up. <laughs> I have no idea. It's that kind of a ball game. We got 327 left, and I'm just looking forward to go to the wire. Smith cans a bear. He has six in a row at the line and six out of seven on the afternoon. 16 points for Juice. 61. UTEP, 16. Seconds left. Gary Gallup along with Irv Brown from the Special Events Center. 61 60. BYU hanging on to a one point lead each team with one timeout left. UTEP will have control of the ball. Well, this one is going to go right down to the wire. UTEP 9 and 2 in the league race. BYU is 7 and 4. And then, of course, of course, lurking right behind New Mexico and San Diego State, both at 8 and 3 behind UTEP. Vital. Turnaround jumper. No. Rebound to Cynic. Sinek has got three boards this afternoon, and that was a big one. They can take it down to almost a minute before they shoot it. Tulson working on Hamilton. Wide Sinek. Open. He didn't get it. Well, what a rebound by Smith. That's 11 for him as he took that one away from Knighting. Top on the boards. 6.8 average, sixth best in the Western Athletic Conference. Smith. Fires it up and in from five feet away, and the Miners regain the lead. And he calls off the press once again with the lead. He was going to press. All right, 106. 62-61, UTEP. Tulson denying in the lane. Short jumper, a little bit short. He was Got hit on the arm. Vital. 
Joe Belmont hangs right in there, makes the call, so we got some free throws coming. Juden Smith did three things that time, Gary. He out-rustled Knighting for the rebound. He came down and gave him a go ahead. First one is no good. Knighting is one of three and has missed his last two. 55 seconds left. He has an opportunity now to tie the game for his team. on that one so a big free throw for the young sophomore here's a situation Gary there are 54 seconds left how far do you take it down before you get a shot off all tied 62 apiece Lockhart will work against Richie Webb Juden Smith has been the most effective good one 12 footer good oh. 36 seconds left 64 62 BYU into the front court and immediately calls timeout. That'll be their last timeout. Hit the key. Takes it up the right side of the lane. The got shot. Fouled. He was fouled, and I don't know if they might not call goal. No, no. Ball's going that. up. I don't think they'll was give it? it to him. Let's see. BYU's asking for it. Ball is going up, but I'll tell you what. What a great call by Liddell Anderson. He breaks out Sarlinen. Then when the side is cleared, Timo goes down the right two side. Shots. Let's take a look. It is definitely a two-shot call. Here's Timo. I thought that they had a good block on the way up. Dick ball underneath will make the foul call. There's no goaltending. It's going up. Right. Good call. Smith you can hit it on the glass. but net on that one. That quiets people when you get the bottom of the sack, doesn't it? Timo Sarlani. He can tie it. He's got 29 points. In and out. The rebound to Hamilton. Got to get it to a ball handler. He's been fouled by Sinek. I'll tell you what, Don Hassel would have liked to have seen Goodwin with that basketball. 64-63 as Sarlani got one or two. It'll be Hamilton at the free throw line. Oh, big fight. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a shame. Let's see, Don Haskins and, and Liddell Anderson yeah. are trying to break it up. Boy, I'll tell you what, this is something. Just look at this Lockhart. Lockhart's going to fight the whole team. Joe Belmont's going to hit the face right in front of us. Just did a good job breaking that thing up. Kids just lost their composure for a moment. Really hurt is the official Joe yeah. Belmont. They're looking at his jaw to see if it's broke. He really took a shot right on the chops. All right, let's see if they sort this thing out. Let's see how they sort this yeah, out. We really. had a foul. Hamilton has Belmont looks coming. like he is, Belmont is done. Is, Belmont got hit right in the chops. He really did. Boy, you really hate to see that, Irv. I'll tell you something like this. Never forget the Ohio State Minnesota game. The official did a great job here, unlike that Ohio State Minnesota game. The coaches did a good job. That thing could have really been nasty and ugly. Well, the police are on the floor, the coaches are on the floor, and it looks like order has finally been re restored. Well, I'll tell you what, what's Sinek the best is, thing about this. Sinek, no fans came out there. Sinek's wiping blood off of his nose. He's got a big scratch on his neck. Tell you, I did not see how it started, Irv. <laughs> but when I looked down right in front of us, it was occurring right in front of us. I can't tell you exactly how it started either. I know this. Lockhart doesn't take anything off of anybody, and he got some licks in. Cynic took one of them. They did a great job keeping the crowd off the floor. Well, Cynic's going to take a few stitches in the nose or the eye, I think. Liddell Anderson See, here, glaring at the, the officials. Yeah, but here's the problem. The officials are going to catch all the grief no matter what they decide, and they didn't have anything to do with that. Yeah. A couple of kids got excited and threw punches. All right, they're going to talk to the coaches right now and tell them what's going, what, what happens here, and the officials can't win in this situation. It's too bad we can't stick a TV mic in a camera. I cannot say enough for the police, and it looks like some football players that kept anyone from coming on the floor. Order has been restored. It is 64-63. UTEP leads it by one. 16 seconds remain in the ball game. There was a foul called on Sinek, 
and Hamilton was scheduled to go to the line. And then a Donnybrook broke out. And we're trying to sort that out right now. When the clock is stopped, all fouls, if they are called, are flagrant technicals. You cannot have a personal foul when the clock is stopped. If you have flagrant technicals, you eject people. That's what the officials are trying to decide. And I cannot tell you what happened. <laughs> I'm looking down at some notes at, to see what Hamilton is shooting. He's a 70% free throw shooter. Now, the officials are doing a good job. Let everybody relax before you play this last 16 seconds. All right, they're explaining it to the When we go back, Hamilton should be at the free throw line. Well, that's for sure. Yeah. That part, that uh, we know, sure, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, coaches <laughs> still are unhappy, though. Haskins is out on the floor talking to Blaine Sylvester. Liddell Anderson is to our right. And he's hollering at him. <laughs> Hamilton's coming over and says, where's the ball? I'll tell you something, Gary. This does Hamilton no good. No. Waiting. All right. So we got the one and one. Yeah. Then I assume we're going to shoot some uh, technical fouls. And two people should be pitched if that's the case. Hamilton is the front end his third point of the day. It is a 65-63 game. He can give the Miners the three-point lead. And up. Now we're going to have some more shooting. Hamilton's right, going to shoot technical some technical shots. Shot, technical foul. And then we'll probably shoot at the other end. And two shots. And BYU, I just saw four shots, sir. Well, I'm not sure that that's right. Let's wait and see. All right. That. It'll be well, Hamilton just missed that one. 66-63. If BYU does shoot four shots, that was a big free throw that he made because UTEP now has a four-point lead. Barely curled that one over the top. He's got 13 points now. One shy of his career record of 14. I'll have one more. It stayed in. So we got ourselves a two-point ball game. And he's going to shoot. 16 cent. We've got a double tech. Two You're more. absolutely right. I thought that they had uh, only called the one team. There was another one that missed free throw at the other end. Is that going to mean something? Coulson, are we looking at OT? It's possible. 16 seconds left. On the mark, he had four in a row. It's tied at 67. And that is his career high now. He's got 16 BYU. BYU. Boy, hey, they've come out of this thing smelling like a rose now, Herb. All right, once again now, Sarlinen is going to go back to get the ball, it looks like. It looks like he'll take it on the dribble all the way. The clock has started. You look at it. Richie Webb out front. Perry to Nichevich. Down to five. Do they know it? Sarah Linen shoots it. No. And there's the horn. We've got overtime. You know, that's the only fair way to decide it, too. This game has been that hotly.